Hi everyone, it's Mr. Drew from Spoof School, and some of y'all might know me for joking around a lot, but today I'm here to talk about something pretty serious. It's stereotypes. What are stereotypes? Wait, wait, no, not those kind of stereotypes. No. No. No again. Stupid thing's not working. Okay, seriously, what are stereotypes? Well, a stereotype is a widely held, oversimplified image of a particular group or person. When stereotyping, an easily grasped characteristic, usually negative, is wrongfully attributed to a whole group. So take a look at these words on the right side of your screen. Have you been called any of these words? Have you called someone any of these words? How did it make you feel? How did it make that person feel? Can any of these words really describe or define a whole person? Stereotypes are often used by people who are too lazy to bother to explore the deep, interesting, complex, layered person that you are, or learn anything about the complex, rich culture that you represent. Let me give you some examples. Now we're just meeting these people and we're gonna to try to describe them in one word because that's what stereotypes do. Let's start with our friend on the left. When I've taken this workshop to different schools in DC and Maryland, I've had my students say different things about this character. People say, maybe he's a tattoo artist. I've also had people say, he looks like a gangbanger. Maybe he's been to jail, but let's challenge ourselves. What if he's an artist who writes poetry in the rain? What if he's the type of person who cries when he accidentally steps on an insect? What if he's sensitive? We don't know. We've never met him, never talked to him. We're just going off appearances. Now let's talk about our friend in the middle. I've had students say, she looks like she's trying to get attention. I've also had students say things about this young lady that I won't repeat here. What's really interesting is some of the nastiest, most negative things that were said about this fictional character were said by other young women who I would assume have had the same type of stereotypes and shame placed on them. I would think they would be the first ones to fight that. But a lot of times we take in the negativity that's around us and turn it into self-hate. What if our friend is dressed that way because it's really hot today? What if she's a fashion designer and makes her own clothes? What if she's at the top of her class and studying to be a rocket scientist? What if she's a genius? And our last friend over on the right. Now, looking at his sweatshirt, the pretty obvious assumption is he's a gamer. I've heard nerd or geek. I even had a student say he looks like he would shoot up the school. But what if underneath that gamer garb, mild-mannered identity, kind of like Clark Kent, and you know his secret, so I guess it's not really a secret, but what if this guy's actually athletic? The truth is, you can't really define any whole person with one word. But that sure hasn't stopped us from trying, has it? Have you been called any of these things? Have you been attributed to any of these groups just because you may share one or two characteristics? How has that made you feel? Now I'm about to show you a couple of short ads. As you watch these ad clips, I want you to think about what the messages are, whether you've ever experienced or witnessed something like what you see in the videos, and how you are going to use what you see in these clips to improve your life, the lives around you, and to strike out stereotypes. Hospedeira, arranjo outro lugar. Minha senhora, a classe económica está lutando. Desculpe, eu não vou viajar ao lado do negro. Faça qualquer coisa. Eu vou falar com o comandante. O comandante manda dizer que conseguimos arranjar lugar na primeira classe. Ah, e pedi-me essas desculpas. Realmente é inconcebível um passageiro viajar ao lado de uma pessoa tão desprezível. Senhor, acompanhe-me, por favor. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
What did y'all think? I'm dying to know. Maybe take this moment to take a pause and reflect. You can write the answers to these questions in your journal, or you can talk about them with whoever you're watching this video with. Listen, folks, I don't know about you, but personally, I don't know anybody who's so boring and one-sided and uninteresting that I could describe them in one word or describe the group they're in in one word. Actually, maybe I do know some people like that. You know what I call those boring, one-sided, uninteresting, one-dimensional people? I call them stereotypists. <laughs> Aren't you sick and tired of all this negative energy? All this stupid name-calling? All this immature idea of having everybody all figured out and being able to describe everybody in one word or to the group that they're a part of in one idea? Aren't you tired of these closed-minded people who refuse to accept the beautiful, colorful mosaic that represents all of our differences, the story tapestry that brings us together in our diversity, but instead just want to paint everybody with one brush? Don't you want to reclaim your power, reclaim your identity, and define yourself for yourself, taking away the power of people who want to define you for you? Well then let's do it. Let's do it together. Let's do it now. Here's the situation. Okay, first I guess I have to tell you what a situation is. In Spoof School, we believe in taking little pieces of what's out there and putting them together and making our own thing. So a skit is a made-up scene, like a sketch or maybe a mini play, where you decide what happens. And a situation is just what happened. So a situation is when we make up what happens. So here's the situation. I want you to say, because I'm this, I must be or do this, right? Wrong. The truth is this. Let me give you some examples of what my Nilsville Middle School students did from Germantown, Maryland. Here's some of the things they said in response to this prompt. Because I'm African, I must just eat foo-foo, right? Wrong. The truth is, I eat all kinds of food. Because I'm Latinx, I must be Mexican, right? Wrong. The truth is, I'm a proud Salvadorian. Because I'm tall, I must be a giraffe, right? Like the air must be different for me up here, right? Wrong. But like a giraffe, I can see over stereotypes way better than you ever could. How are you going to strike out stereotypes with this prompt? Now once you've done that, let me tell you a secret. The best way to fight uncreative people like stereotypists is to be creative. Use your creativity as a weapon against them. Take the same things that they're trying to make fun of and use them to show why you're so awesome. So look, I got three strikes for y'all. Three creative ways to make them stereotyping haters look as silly as they are. Simile, metaphor, and slang. Now, a simile is a poetic device which uses words like like, well, not like like. It uses like or as <laughs> to compare two things. So how can you use simile to describe stereotypes yourself or anything else? Here's an example. A stereotype is like a prison. You put me in a box to define who I am, but while in a box, I can't be who I am. Then there's metaphor. A metaphor is a poetic device which equates two things which are obviously different. Unlike similes, it doesn't use like or as. You just become the thing. You are it. Example, I am a rainbow. It is all the different colors of me which define my beauty. But my favorite strike on stereotypes is to use your own culture, the same thing that somebody's trying to clown you for, and show how special and unique it is, show how dope it is, not the least of which is a way of slang. Slang is a group of special expressions that are only used by certain cultures or in certain contexts. They are often very creative. Now, one of my favorite things to study in slang is what I call the solemn oath. It's a way of saying, I swear, I'm so serious. I'm from New Orleans, and in New Orleans, we say I swear by saying for sure, also known as for sure. We also might say you heard me, but I'm really interested in this punctuation we use of yeah and no. It's really an emphasis, so it'll be at the end of a sentence. Like my dad might have said, you better be inside before the street lights come on, yeah. I ain't playing no. Now in Baltimore, where I go for a lot of my teaching artistry work, they might say the solemn oath by saying already which is short for you already know for real but you say it like it's one word a whole time whole time i get it whole time i swear whole time i'm serious but i've never seen a place with more types of solemn oath 
than where I live right now, D.C. Kill, Mo. Off the no bull, young. Stamp, son. That's bard, shawty. On um, mothers. Real live Fox 5. Now, different regions also have different slang for words like friend. In D.C., you might call your friends your squad. In Baltimore, you might say that's my A1 or that's my mans. And in New Orleans, at least when I was there, we used to say baby or woody. Now, the way I talk might sound kind of funny to some of y'all, but guess what? Talking this talk and showing my pride in where I'm from got me an award-winning two-man show called From Gumbo to Mumbo. Oh, you want a little taste of the show? Let me help y'all, whoa. Wow. Look, my city's all that, my city's all real. I live in D.C., but I'm New Orleans still. We got levees, y'all got heels. We say, you me, y'all say kill. I root for the Saints on the football field. They may break my heart, but I love them still. Cowboys, Redskins, what's the deal? We gave y'all Dak and gave you Doug Will. Yums, I'm from New Orleans Slim. Crawfish boils in, pralines with pecans in them. St. all Garlopin, people from New Orleans. This what we be calling them. If you're from New Orleans, you a Even in D.C., I'm still a See, I'm from the 13, I'm a it's your man from the boot, Tremada Chapatulis, where they at? From the boot, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, cruising down the street, real slow, with the fellas be yelling, Morero. All right, that's enough of that there, you heard me? And the last thing I'm going to share with y'all is a story about how I've dealt with a stereotype. Now, I don't know if y'all noticed this, but Mr. Drew has a lot of hair right here, but ain't got no hair up here. And people try to come after me for my bald head like I'm supposed to be ashamed or embarrassed of it. I'm proud of my bald head. I think I take rather nice care of it. And I'm not the only one who likes my bald head. But people try to insult me about it. And it's even this dude around my way who, when he sees me across the street, he be like, Bald head! Bald head! Let me shine your bald head! And the craziest thing about that is he got a bald head too! Shine your own bald head, old man! So this is a way that I turned that around and poetically struck out a stereotype or at least somebody trying to be funny at my expense. People see my bald mane and think I should be ashamed, but I show it off brave because I'm too wavy for waves. My thoughts too twisted for braids, my halo bigger than an afro, head shine like an apple, chilling with Krillin and Piccolo. Because I'm dragon bald, so all that hating don't faze me. I do what I want because I'm a boss baby. A clever kind, so negativity never mind. Bald brother with a big brain, call me Mega Mind. So in closing, I hope that I've invited y'all into a world devoid of stereotypes, one in which we embrace everyone as a unique individuals that they are. I also challenge us to start asking about people's pronouns and not making assumptions about their gender. You can't necessarily look at someone and assume that they identify as either a man or a woman. In the meantime, I've armed you all with three ways to strike out on stereotypes. Simile, strike one. Metaphor, strike two. And slang, strike three. Stereotypes, you're done struck out. When will I start to forget you?